Yo, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's JSF. Um, and I gotta make this video today. I gotta make it right now because if I don't do it and put it out tonight, I'm probably not gonna do it. I've actually been trying to put this video out for like two weeks, I wanna say. Yeah, ever since the Japanese uh, fighting game developer roundtable, whatever it is that they do every year, every six months, I can't tell, I'm sorry. But I've wanted to make this video since then, and it's about free-to-play fighting games. You see the title, so you know what I'm going to talk about. But the difference between me and everybody else is talking about free-to-play fighting games because now everybody, like Maximilian has made a bunch of videos about it, I've seen Giuna say some things, Say Jam say some things, like... I want to tell you how to make free-to-play fighting games. But before we even get into that, I got to tell you why you should make free-to-play fighting games. Why you should even want it, right? Because some people hear free-to-play and they think like mobile games. Like, oh, you got to grind and grind and grind. Oh, wait. You got to wait for your energy to refill so you can even play the game right now. And I'm not talking about the predatory mobile iPhone free-to-play game model. None of that shit. I'm talking free to play like you can get the game, you can get online for no dollars at all, but you know, but there is still money to be made for the developers. So before I get into the details of it, why do I want free to play fighting games? Honestly, I think it's the future. I think it's the future of fighting games. I think it's the future for a lot of video games, right? The most successful video games, some of the video games that generate the most revenue are free-to-play games. And I, and I know if you're not, like, hip, if you're not, if you don't understand, it's counterintuitive. It's like, how is it going to make money if it's free? You put so much money into developing the game, like, why would I sell it for free, right? Yeah, but you put paid options in there and you make them less than the price of a game that makes more people more likely to buy it and because it's free to play there's more people playing it i think killer instinct was killer instinct was the first fighting game to attempt the free-to-play model uh, you could pick jago and it was like a rotating character every day the character changed right the game was completely free if that's all you wanted if you wanted more you had to pay for more right and i think 10 million plus or something 13 million something like that people downloaded and played the game Whereas if you have to buy the game, you're lucky if you get a million in that first, you know, month or whatever, one million in like, they, sure they paid for it, but you're lucky if you get that many people. Now imagine if you get 10 times that amount of people, 20 times that amount of people, but you get them to pay less, right? You can make the same amount of money. You can make way more money if you do it correctly. This is why, right? And this isn't something that we're just making up now. It's something that's pretty proven, right? We've been saying for a long time, we want the FGC to be bigger. We want fighting games to be bigger, more mainstream. We want them to have bigger prize pools. We want more people to play and more people to play against. And if you look at, like, let's say Steam charts or something, like it, who's playing fighting games right now, the fighting game, quote-unquote, that's being played the most is Brawlhalla, and it's a free-to-play game. Now, people can argue whether or not that's a normal fighting game. Oh, it's a platform fighter, it's a Smash Club. Cool, but it's free, and people play it more than every other fighting game. Like, you might see, like, 1,500 people on Street Fighter or 1,000 people on Mortal Kombat. You'll see, like, 8K people on Brawlhalla. Like, it's not even close. There's way more people playing it, and it being free is definitely a part of it it's got collabs with a lot of big franchises you got other you got other video games i think like shovel knights in it you got like cartoons you got like Finn from adventure time you got wwe wrestlers in it. you got like the rock and all that in it you literally got a street fighter collab in it like in the brawlhalla like esports the pro circuit in 2022, which apparently is their seventh year of esports, they're giving away over a million dollars. I don't care how much you like Street Fighter, Capcom ain't giving away a million. I don't care how much you like Mortal Kombat, NRS ain't giving away a million. It's not happening. So if you want more people to play against in the game, you want more exposure for the game, for the community, etc. You want bigger prize pools, etc. Free to play is kind of the wave, right? The most successful fighting game is free-to-play and just some of the most successful games in general. Like, League of Legends is a free-to-play game. Apex is a free-to-play game. Like, Fortnite, love it or hate it. I know Fortnite's a meme, but it's one of the most successful video games in a long time. Literally, GTA is the only game that's not free-to-play that's, like, standing with these free-to-play games and making money. And that's because it has so much shit in it, so much additional content, so much going on in it. So, free to play is like 
the future of fighting games, whether you guys like it or not. But the thing is, I don't see what the reason for not liking it is. You get a free game. Literally, what's the downside? I, I know some people have the mindset of the mobile games free to play, but that's not what we're talking about. You don't need to model it like that. Like that model is dated. It's shitty. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about free to play as in, hey, I buy a game. Maybe there's, let's say I buy Street Fighter 6 and there's eight characters in it. Eight characters and four stages in it. I have access to that. Not, I say buy, but I mean, I, I download it. There's eight characters, four stages. Cool, right? It's free. You can play online. You can do that. Now, let's say in three months, they release Season Pass 1 with some new characters. I can get that, but I got to pay for it, right? They got some new skins coming out. I got to pay for it. So this is where you get into how to do it, how to make a free-to-play fighting game, right? The part that nobody really, really, really discusses that I have a good uh, good grip on, like that I understand pretty well, because the blueprint's laid out. Let's just be honest. The blueprint's laid out. Be it from other fighting games or be it from other games in general. If you look at Fortnite, Fortnite makes a fucking million dollars selling emotes. What are emotes? Fucking animations, taunts, dances, shit like that in costumes, right? We got a million skins in Street Fighter V, and I think people have kind of even realized maybe the skins in Street Fighter V helped fund the development of Street Fighter V. Because when it first came out, it looked like it didn't really have shit, and they didn't really have money for shit. But somewhere along the line, they got the money, and they made better shit, right? That's a part of it. Like, put more skins in the game. People love skins. People will buy skins. You can get Capcom gets as fucking predatory with the skins as they want. And nobody complains about it. <laughs> so, I don't see how you can complain about free-to-play when you're like, hmm, should I buy Laura's third swimsuit? Maybe I should buy that. Chun-Li's 17th costume? Let me go ahead and cop that. So, that's definitely something people like. Something that NetherRealm does. And something that's kind of... I don't want to say dying in fighting games because every fighting game isn't designed to have it is like taunts, right? You know, every fighting game doesn't have a taunt button, but there are ways to do it. Like in Mortal Kombat, let's say Injustice, there are end of round taunts. Like I end the round, I do a taunt. And there's so many different ones that they put in the game. And like MK11, literally like a year after the game being out, being out, they were adding new taunts. And I think people would buy like, hey, I'll, I'll buy a dollar for this taunt or I'll buy I'll spend a dollar for this taunt pack because I don't have it. I don't want to grind through the towers of time to get it right. And you can always have that option. Like Street Fighter has fight money. Like you can have the free option of I can grind to try to get, you know, in-game currency to get this or I can spend a dollar for it. Not, now, this is, these are for cosmetics, not for things that make you better at the game. Like, hey, I can grind for fight money to buy a costume in the Street Fighter shop. Or I can pay $3. You know what I mean? You, you got to add shit like that. You can add more skins. You add taunts, like end of round taunts, like in NRS games. You can add new stages if you want. People will buy stages. Obviously, DLC packs, like a season pass, like characters, stages, whatever, like... Five new characters coming out. Let's say you, like I said, you put out Street Fighter 6, it's free, it's eight characters, four stages. Cool, Season Pass comes out. Season Pass 1, it's uh, four new characters, two new stages. Charge people 25 bucks for that. They'll buy it. They already have the game, it's free, and the people that don't buy it, it's okay. Offer them the, the chance to buy it individually. Like in Dragon Ball Fighters, there's Season Passes for characters, but you can buy one character for $5. Let's say I don't want Broly, but I want Vegito. I can buy Vegito for $5 instead of spending 30 on the pack. Give people that option. And Killer Instinct did that in 2013, 2014, but we still haven't really caught up like that. Another thing you can sell, and this is kind of more specific to NRS games like Mortal Kombat and Injustice, is like intros and outros and win poses, right? I think every fighting game has win poses, like even Street Fighter has win poses, but they don't have more than one. It's just that one pose they do with like a quote or something. And NRS games, especially MK11, they got multiple win poses. You can sell some of those. Hey, you want this super cool win pose for Scorpion? We're going to add another one in six months. You want to buy it? Buy it for a dollar or whatever, two dollars. I think people will buy shit like that, cosmetic shit. And some people say, oh, you're just selling shit that should be free. You're selling shit that should be free, but the game is free. The game costed you nothing, right? And you can always put an option of them to play the game more and more and more and more to get it for free, to get fight money, you know what I mean? Or you can just say, hey, I'll spend a dollar to get this cool-ass intro for Scorpion. 
to get this cool ass outro like i think that people will really do that you can do the same thing for story packs expansions so let's say you do you want to do a story dlc like uh aftermath like mortal kombat 11 aftermath right it's a story expansion you got new characters new story chapters you can sell that right but the base game is still free the same thing announcer voices in mk you got johnny cage raiden different announcer voices chronica and dragon ball fighters they do the same thing you can have piccolo announcer voice you can have Whoever else you want to have. Android 18, I think. People like shit like that, right? That's stuff that people will spend money on that will support the game. And people just want to have it. Like, I don't understand. Like, to me, it's so clear. It's clear as day. And it's a lot of shit that other games are already doing. But fighting games haven't really caught up with. But it's like... They might do it, like one fighting game will do it, but the rest of the the rest of the developers and the community just don't get hip to it and they just stick with what they know. Sell a game for sixty dollars and then sell you more additional shit. You could do something like uh with uh MKX had where they sold a skin for like three dollars, I think. And it was like a, a variation of a scorpion skin. And it was a custom Scorpion skin that was really cool. They painted it blue. Hey, Sub-Zero skin. But if you buy this, the money you, you spend on it will go towards the tournament circuit. So not, not only are you buying a skin to get in-game, you're also supporting the competitive scene and helping them make more money. And they made a shit ton of money off of that. That's another thing you could do. You could do that for literally any game. Right, especially any game where characters are similar, throw a Ryu skin in the game. Hey, kin, make it a kin skin, sell it, or just a simple skin for like, like how Capcom does the CPT skins, a certain colorway, a certain design that they give to every character. Just say, hey, if you buy this, you know, fifty percent of the proceeds to go to the Capcom Pro Tour, whatever. Just as just as an example, right? There are plenty of ways to do this, and I think the future of fighting games is free to play because this is how you get more people to pay more people to play, more people invested in it, more people are interested in it. And as, from a business standpoint, you're going to make more money because it's not like you go from a million people playing your game to two million. Like fighting games have a massive drop off. After like the first month, like everybody drops the game and only the diehards keep playing it. So let's say you go from a million people buying the game and playing it. Like you're not going to, with free to play, you're not going to jump to two million or three million. You're going to jump to like 10 million. 15 million like the amount you're gonna jump up is gonna be so absurd and if that many more people just spend ten dollars twenty dollars whatever i'm not doing the math right now but you're gonna make that much more money you're gonna get that much more players you're gonna have more people who are able to get matches online you're gonna get more data on how people are playing the game it's like a win 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 for everybody so I don't really understand why it has why it hasn't happened yet. I think people are just behind. But that's just how I feel. Y'all let me know how y'all feel. I think free to play is the future. I think we should roll with that. And I'm down to like like I think with Killer Instinct they had a free to play version. Obviously they had like a twenty dollar option, like a forty dollar option. I think you can do something like that. Hey, if you want the free to play game, here you go. If you want to get the season pass when it comes out in two months to get the extra characters and extra stages, pay twenty dollars. If you want to get the season pass plus this, if you want to get the the season pass one and two, then pay for it. Like there are ways to go about it. Whereas, like, hey, there's a paid option, but there's a free to play option. And the free to play option, you can still play online. You can still play, you know, local. You can still do everything you want to do. You're just limited in the amount of characters, the amount of stages, the amount of skins you have. But you can still experience the game. I think that's really where we need to go with fighting games. A lot of people are talking about it, but this is how I think it'll work. I think this is how you should do it. But again, let me know what y'all think. I've been talking for a minute, so. I would like to see some opinions. If you agree, if you disagree, let me know. I I don't really see why, what the downside is. As long as you're not doing a predatory free-to-play model, which I don't think you have to do anymore. I think, I think it'd be great. I think we would just no longer have the issue of I can't find a match. Have the issue of nobody's playing this game. Like We would solve a lot of that. But again, let me know how y'all feel. Y'all like the video, let me know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Y'all stay safe. JSF, I'm out of here. Peace.